This is the Emergency Medical Minute, sponsored by Health One. So um, I know that you've probably heard a lot of buprenorphine, and we're hoping to start buprenorphine uh, pretty soon and uh, giving up to patients with opioid use disorder who are in opioid withdrawal. Um, but what problem do you have if, for example, someone comes in and they use either Suboxone or they use buprenorphine, and let's say they have a fractured femur? What's the big issue there? Pain management. Pain management can be really difficult if someone's actually on buprenorphine and they come in with something that's more acute. And the reason why is because buprenorphine is a very long-acting kind of partial agonist of the, of the uh, mu receptor. So oftentimes, if people are on high-dose buprenorphine or have any of like these buprenorphine um, implantable devices and you give them kind of your old-fashioned Dilaudid or fentanyl, it might do absolutely nothing for the patient because all those receptors are actually already occupied by buprenorphine, and buprenorphine has a much stronger adherence to those receptors than your traditional fentanyl or your traditional Dilaudid. So, what else can you do for pain control? The good thing is you guys have a lot of stuff you can use, right? So, ketamine is a really great thing that you can use for pain control. And then also, there's this concept that all of us are gonna have to get a little more familiar with, which is this concept of receptor availability. Okay. So if someone is on a high-dose buprenorphine, they're taking 16 milligrams of buprenorphine or above, then there's not a lot of receptor availability. So giving them kind of traditional narcotics is not going to really get them there in terms of pain. You can still try it, but don't be surprised when you fail miserably. Okay. Um, the other thing is if they actually take 8 milligrams or a lower dose, then there's actually a lot of receptors that are still available, and you can give a narcotic to that patient, and they likely will get some pain benefit to them, okay? Now, if you're supposed to, if you're gonna use a narcotic for someone who's on buprenorphine, what narcotic pain medicine should you use? Buprenorphine. Keep them on their bup, right? Uh, because it's a really great and powerful um, opioid anesthetic. As it's, you know, the dosage is actually about as small as 0.3. Uh, we should probably be using it more for patients with acute pain, but if someone's on buprenorphine, and they come in with an acute painful injury, one of the first things I would actually order for them is a bunch of altos and then additional buprenorphine, okay? Um, so one, as you see this used more and more in our community, I think these patients are gonna be patients that you're gonna become more and more familiar with. And just kind of knowing that these, that traditional opioids might be more difficult to use, having that concept of receptor availability, so less than 16 milligrams, you can go ahead and try it. Over 16 milligrams is probably pretty worthless. And then knowing that Buprenorphine itself, an IV form, which we actually have in our formulary, is another thing that you have in your toolkit to possibly treat those patients with pain. No, no. IV buprenorphine and oral buprenorphine are dosed radically differently, right? Uh, so an oral dose of buprenorphine ranges from anywhere between 2 and 8 to start with. An IV dose is 0.3. So really, really big difference in terms of, in terms of how much. And then buprenorphine is great because what happens to the patient's consciousness and their respiratory drive, whether you give two or whether you give 32, nothing. You hit a ceiling after you get past 16. So that's what one of the really cool things about buprenorphine is unless they're on a bunch of benzos and other things that sedate them, you're not going to have your patient come in and be apneic and be blue if you give a lot of it. So, okay. Thank you, friends. Emergency Medical Minute is and always will be about free medical education. Medicine's most prolific podcast is successful because of our supporters, donors, and of course, our listeners. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you support spreading free medical education, please donate at our website, emergencymedicalminute.com. As always, keep listening.